I don't want to waste your time, so there won't be an intro. Up until now, the only time you could ever get access to the comms of a Pro League team was when they uploaded carefully curated highlight videos. But that changed recently when Helby and Leon Gitz started to upload a bunch of their matches with uncut in-game comms. And as far as I'm aware, those are the only videos out there that feature Pro League level comms. I link their YouTube, Twitch and Twitter in the description, so please follow them on those. Okay, so what can we learn from listening to their comms? Let's just start with the main point. What is the biggest difference between the comms of a Pro League team and the comms of, let's say, your rank stack? That's actually very simple. It's just the sheer amount of information that is being transmitted. And this mainly comes down to the fact that you are not communicating enough. And I don't even need to know how much you are communicating. I already know that it's not nearly enough. But go ahead and convince yourself. This is how comms are supposed to sound like. Mute, mute is not bien. Okay, do you want, are you on Peter on tape? Okay, I'm rotating to Prisa. Where are you, Leon? Go! I'm in sweat. Video downstairs, video inside library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. What about red stairs? Grab the diffuser somewhere. Red stairs to clear. I've got red stairs to enter. Okay. Bring Havana. Bring a Havana. Let's go. I'm coming. I'm coming. Open up. No one watching flank right now. Jaeger, Jaeger's in short. I'll watch flank. I'm jumping out of square. They disputed. Disputed. I need to touch. Come, 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 come. I left. I left square, boys. Okay. I'll put my dolly on if you can. If you're being honest with yourself, that's a pretty big difference. And now I want to break down what exactly makes these comms great and how you can emulate them. Obviously. The biggest part of communicating is calling out the positions of opponents. But all of you are already aware of that, so I'm going to focus on the aspects of calling that are a bit more advanced. Because just making a callout whenever you see an opponent is far from enough. You actually need to make callouts for everything you see and everything you hear. You're being droned out? Tell your team about it. The attackers breached the wall? Tell your team about it. You heard a window breaking? Tell your team about it you got it by now. So let's see how this looks like in action. And I'm always going to subtitle the specific callouts that are relevant to my points. No, no, no. They impacted something. Yeah, the mid castle. All right. Breaching short now. Fuck me, man. Thermite break ro room. Triple. They're coming off side now. Yeah. One long, two long. One long, buck. Nice. Open the short Open castle. The short castle. Yep. yep. Okay, I'm coming to main stairs. I'm coming to main stairs. Counter bomb. Road on site. They're mining the wall. They're mining this wall. The Arca oh, wall. No, the drone okay. above. Here, you can very clearly hear them calling that a castle barricade broke, that the attackers are breaching short, that they are pushing offers, that they opened the short castle, and that they are breaching the archives wall. The reason why you call out all of that is because it is absolutely essential for your entire team to have a kind of shared vision on the current situation. And the main thing to realize here is that while individually every one of those callouts is pretty meaningless, but if everyone on the team is doing it, it's actually possible to get a pretty clear picture of what your opponents are up to. But knowing what your opponents are doing is only half the battle. The other half is knowing what your teammates are doing. And no, you can't just turn around and look at what your teammates are doing. At least not in high pressure situations. In those, the only way to get to know what they're doing is for them to tell you about it. I'm gonna crawl through. He's got a oh, shield. Fuck. A... He's got a shield. You can jump in the radio here. Yeah, I'm going. Jumping in. I have to I'm crouch in. Oh, across. Yeah, he's speaking. I'm pushing, I'm pushing close. He dead. Nice. Yeah. One, One more hell. Dead. Nice, Yunus. Here you just saw Yunus being ready to push the fountain player but he was waiting until Fonkers called that he jumped into radio window because he wanted to make sure that they could have traded each other. And this really is what team play is about, right? True team play is not asking your teammates for help and then getting it. True team play is knowing what your teammates are doing and then helping them before they can even ask for help. And again, the best way to know what your teammates are doing is for them to tell you. Getting shot from stock, getting spotted, and uh, they have drones for me, then. Okay. Yeah, yeah, one, I can come help you, Buzz. I'm making calls for your door, Buzz. I don't know oh. where the box is. Box customs. I'm covering the store, Buzz. I'm covering I the think they're ordering. I think they're ordering. Yeah, I'm covering Buckway, the store, Buzz. Buckway. Buckway in stock. Buckway in stock. Yeah, Buzz, I'm covering the server door. I'm on short. I'm holding short. I'm holding short with my clash. 
This just now was another beautiful example of that. Blast calls out that he's being pressured, and immediately Leon, Meepy, and Funkers think of a way to help him out. And crucially, they also tell him how they are helping him and which sides they are covering. So, as you can see, calling out what you're doing is an essential part of facilitating team play. And obviously, the same idea applies to defense as well. In fact, here it's arguably even more important to know what everyone is doing, because that's the only way to guarantee that there are no gaps in your defense. Listen to how Secret is playing this 4v2 situation to make sure that they are covering every entrance to the site. This is a long, it's long, I hear I'm you. not holding anything, I'm not holding anything. I'm Volt. Okay. I'm, hold, I'm literally holding a passive angle in towards the uh, avian push. Okay, okay, if you shoot, I shoot. I'm looking at this ping funk. I will pre-fire okay. when I want to. Everyone on your team needs to periodically call out which angle they are currently holding. And this applies to dead players too. They need to call out which cam they are holding. Is that me or not? No, no, yeah. Jump downstairs cam as well. Yeah, I'm flicking through cams. On the roof. I'm on long desk cam, uh, sis, get on others. They smoke me? I'm gonna come back site. And this of course also includes coordinating who's holding which cam, as you just heard in that clip. All right. So these really are the most important things when it comes to communicating. Call out everything you see, call out everything you hear, and call out everything you do. Okay, maybe not everything. Cluttering comms by talking too much is a thing. What? What? Nice. Guys, 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 freaking, 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 shut up, shut up. And ideally it shouldn't be resolved like that. But first of all, you are probably far away from reaching that threshold, and second, cluttering comms is usually not a product of too many callouts, it's a product of callouts that are not precise enough. And the best way to solve that is to have a name for every common spot in the game. And notice how I say spot, not room. If you draw out Jaeger in this corner, for example, and you say Jaeger in piano, that doesn't actually tell your team anything. And if you say Jaeger in piano in that corner at the back with the bench and the suitcase, well, that's a garbage tier color too. The solution is to have a specific name for all of those spots. Coming up with those is a bit tedious, but it's just something that has to be done. Here's an example of which spots should have unique callouts on Cafe Top Floor. Having proper callouts is also an essential part of the next topic, which is proper droning. If you think your job while droning is to simply call out defenders that you are seeing, you are pretty far off. Just like before, the idea of calling out everything you see, hear, or do applies again. Listen to how a secret is joining the top floor here. Okay, joining up. Joining the right side, Lucky. No one closing the windows. Side. Left side clear. Right side clear. No one visa. Running small desk. Yeah. No one. No one clear, clear up to mid. Uh, no, clear, 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 I'm turning down One on yellow, Jaeger. Sofa clear. Okay, one's on I'm yellow. I'm going guys. to yellow door. I'm going to yellow door. There are mainly two things that you should be taking away from this. First one is that when you finish joining a room, you need to call that this room is clear. And second is that after you've cleared a room, you need to call out which room you are joining next. That way, your entry fragger always knows which spots are safe and where he should be pointing his gun at. Okay, so that covered most of the stuff that happens during the action phase of a round. But a big part of communication also happens during operator select and prep phase. Ideally, you want to use that time to talk about strategy. For example, by recapping the strategy that you want to play next. So, recap the plan. Okay, three people push archives, two push from office, one pushes from the archives window. One on the window can then rotate. I'm gonna listen, like up, listen up, listen up. I'm gonna kill this master gun stock immediately. I'm gonna start score this right. One number two thing. Check if there's a pulse. We need to know if there's a pulse. Or similarly, you can recap what your opponent said last round so you can adapt your strategy. Anything you can say about archives, uh, helping. Go. Yes, okay, they're push. Uh, IQ comes in from visa door, and then Buck at the same time gets in from visa, visa window. window. Yes. They have a smoke in front of the tellers. And once they're in, they try to push circle stairs to downstairs, and they push banana. visa stairs. Yeah, banana. Yeah. They push a yeah, lot of stairs at the same time. Let's back and mortals. No? Right, right after that, Thermite also starts to push through garage. Like okay. they're, they're like 
individually Squeezing. trying to push. In this case, it was their coach, Helby, who was doing the recapping, because he obviously had a better idea of what was going on. But if you don't have a coach, you can also do that yourself. And the goal here is, of course, to get a better understanding of why you lost, so you can then find a way to improve for the next round. And in order to do that, it's totally fine to have a discussion. And sometimes it's okay for that discussion to be a bit heated too. Okay, I just, I just, just, I just want to tell, I just want to say, Stizzy, your job isn't to look through holes. Your job is to protect me. Okay, just for future reference. And don't just randomly waste C4s, please. Are we talking about my one? No. No LMs. Uh, yeah, you say in front of uh, hallway, visa hallway, so I see for the door. But what is very important here is that this discussion cannot bleed over into the next round. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Next round. Fucking next round, boys. Let's, let's go, go, boys. Yeah. Focus up, fucking win these gunfights. Let's fucking go, okay? As soon as the prep phase starts, you need to mentally reset and fully focus on the round at hand. All right, those were eight things that you can learn from Pro League comms. And the nice thing here is that even though proper communication has a really big impact on the game, it's a lot easier to learn than, let's say, aim or game sense. It's just that up until now, there were no resources available to help you learn. And admittedly, some of those tips are only really relevant when you're playing with a serious team in serious matches. But the main thing I want you to take away from this video is just that you need to communicate more. You need to call out what you're hearing, you need to call out what you're seeing, and you need to call out what you're doing. That's really all there is to it. And that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new and thanks for watching.